Amen. Welcome to a new life worship experience. Let's praise him. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah.
preaching, he was saying, oh, that death tried his best. Hallelujah. Said death kept checking in on him. Kept checking in. Kept saying, yeah, he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one time, he went to check in on him, and he was not there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he lost. And I'm glad he lost. Because he lost, I live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He got up. Amen. Amen. I'm excited on today because we've made it to the fourth quarter of, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the second quarter of the year. Amen. And we're in the fourth month. We're in April. And God has so fit that we would see it. Amen. So the month of April, we have a prayer request. If you have a prayer journal, the whole month of April, we're praying for increase. Come on, just say that together. Say increase. 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 Hallelujah. You got to get comfortable asking God to increase. Hallelujah. And 1 Chronicles 4 and 10 reads, 1 Chronicles 4 and 10 reads, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. On today, we want, and for this whole month, we want to pray that God would indeed bless us and that he would bring forth the increase. Hallelujah. Anybody want enough to share? Hallelujah. I want more than enough. I want to be able to share. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I find somebody looking for a house, I don't want to say you're going to stay in my other house. Hallelujah. I want to have enough to share. Hallelujah. We serve a God that can do just that. Hallelujah. So we're getting ready. Hallelujah. As Minister Brown is coming, we want to pray that God would increase. Let us go before his throne of grace. Heavenly Father, on this morning, Lord, before we open our mouths to request, Father God, we first give you glory. We honor your name and we praise you, Lord God, because simply of who you are, Lord, for the fact that you are the head of our lives, Lord, you are the director of our lives. You are the lover of our souls, Father God. You are the giver of peace, Lord God. And we ask that you continue to reign over all things in our lives, Lord, that we give all things to you, Father God. We give them all to you, Father God, because in our hands, Lord, we can't promise what will happen, Lord God. But we know that with you, with your direction and your purpose, Heavenly Father, that everything that we do will work towards the glory of your kingdom, Father God. This month, Lord, as we bring to you the idea of increase, Father God, the first thing that we ask, Lord, is a discipline to be able to handle the increase, Heavenly Father. Father God, that you would show us, Father God, through the study of your word, Father God, and through our meditations and our prayers, Father God, what it is to handle what it is that you have for us, Father God, that we not misuse anything that you place in our lives in abundance, Heavenly Father, but that we use every resource, Father God, every part of the abundance, Father God, to grow ourselves and grow the kingdom, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for an opportunity to come to you, Father God, as a true father in the nature of a father, giving all that you have to your children, Father God. We know that there is nothing that you desire to hold from us, Father God. Anything that's held, Father God, we know is just a not yet, Lord God, but we thank you in advance, Lord, for what it is that you will do in the life of a believer this month, Father God. Every heart and every mind has something, Lord God, an area that needs to be increased, Father God, an area where there needs to be overflow, Heavenly Father, an area where there is just simply a need to be met, Lord God, and we ask that you meet that right now, Heavenly Father. Father God, it may be monetary, Lord God, or it may be emotional, Father God. It may be strength, Lord God, but an increase is needed, Father God. An increase is needed on this morning, Father God, to continue to do your will or even to see your will, Father God. An increase of faith may be needed, Father God, to walk with you, Lord, to trust you and believe in you, Father God, that your promises are for all, Lord. And we pray for that increase on this morning, Father God. 
We know that your promise stretches from age to age, Father God. There's no limit on who is to receive this increase, Father God. So as you touch us, Father God, we ask that you touch these youth, Father God. That you increase, Father God, and show your abundance in their lives as well, Lord God, in ways that they can understand that grow them and develop them into young Christians, Father God, believers in you, Father God, trusters of your word, Lord God, and walkers of the faith, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the way that you have brought us through, Father God. We thank you for the increase of the past, Lord God, and I pray that you open our hearts and open our minds to see, Lord God, just the way that you increase, Father God, to expand our thinking, Lord God, beyond the basic elements of this earth, Lord God, and to see truly how you bless, Father God, how you touch, Father God, how you continue to provide, Lord Jesus. We thank you for an opportunity, Father God, to live in an area of increase, Father God, to go through a season of increase, Father God, and we we pray that we don't misuse these blessings, Father God, that you have for your people. Yes. Heavenly Father God, as we turn this corner at the beginning of another month, Father God, and we take communion, Lord God, knowing that your son broke his body, Father God, for us, knowing that your son bled for us, Father God, so that we could have life abundantly, Father God. We pray, Father God, that in this month, Lord God, that everything that you add into our lives, Father God, we are able to turn and give glory to you, Father God. Yes. Father God, that everything that we do praises your name, Lord God. That anything that is not like you, Father God, is turned down and turned away, Lord God. That any offering of the devil, Father God, is turned down and turned away because there is nothing that Satan can offer us, Lord God, that is greater than what you have for us, Father God. I thank you that we're able to stand here today, Father God, and lift your name and praise your name, Lord God. I thank you that even though we don't know what it's going to look like yet, Father God, we know it is going to be great, Lord God. We know that there is greater in store, Father God. Regardless of what we have an idea for, Father God, we know that what you have for us is best, Lord. And I pray that we all accept the blessing that is to come, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. We lift your name on this morning, Lord God. We praise you on this morning, Father God. Let our mouths always praise you, Father God. I pray for an increase in the prayer life of every believer, Father God. To know to get to increase means that we step up our prayers to you, Father God. That we know that we can talk to you, Father God, in very plain language, in very plain tongue, because you know our heart, Lord. It's not the amount of words, Father God, but the sincerity of the believer, Lord God, that's going to get us there, Lord. And I pray that we are all able to step up our prayer lives, Father God. I pray for an abundance of wisdom, Father God. I pray for an increase in our spiritual wisdom for our daily lives, Lord God. I pray for an increase in discernment in the life of believers, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that every single element of your, your armor, Father God, that we need be increased, Father God, to continue to do this battle. Because we know that as you bless us, Father God, the attacks will come, Lord God. And that way, may we be protected on all fronts in all situations, Lord God, against attacks from the enemy, Father God. May you continue to lift us up, Father God. May, may New Life Church of God in Christ continue to do a great thing for the ministry, Father God. But any and every house of God continue to do a great thing for the ministry, Father God. Increase these buildings, Father God. Increase these congregations, Lord God. Increase these churches, Father God. Increase the will to do the work, Father God. Increase the faith, Heavenly Father, Lord God. Increase our endurance, Lord God. Build us up, Father God, that we may do mighty things for you, Lord God. Never forgetting whose we are, Father God. Never forgetting who we belong to, Lord God. But carrying your name above any other name in every situation that we walk into, Lord God. Lord, you're wonderful. You are amazing, Father God. Our words do not do justice exactly who you are, but we will praise you until we can't praise you anymore, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. And before the blessing of increase comes, we say thank you, Lord God. Strengthen us, Father God, to continue to be able to do the will of what you give. Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What a moment. 
Sunday we had on that Sunday celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a good time. Will you put your hands together for it? Hallelujah. He died for our sins and rose again. Hallelujah. He's eternally triumph. Hallelujah. Over our enemies. Hallelujah. So there will be no condemnation for those who believe that we may have everlasting joy and everlasting life. And we continue on today, as I told you, to celebrate. Hallelujah. The victory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The new Sabbath. Hallelujah. We'll be here next Sunday celebrating again the new Sabbath. Amen. Uh, we continue to celebrate. Hallelujah. What our Christ performed for us on the cross. And so on this month, we're going to reflect on what it took for Christ to make it to the cross mm -hmm. to die on the cross for you and I Amen. Christ made up his mind that he would need to what? Focus okay. and out of that focus we have salvation Amen. and as disciples of Christ Amen. to do the work that is set before us it is going to require us to focus so on this month, we plan to, amen, just kind of tighten up screws, amen, <laughs> so we can be focused and dialed in, that we might be able to be the people of God that God has called us to be. Amen. Luke 9, Luke chapter 9, verse 51, if you'll be so kind and turn to it, Luke 9, 51, and it reads, Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, uh -huh. that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, 
that he steadfastly, he, Jesus, steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was where it all would take place. Amen. He had to focus and move forward to go to Jerusalem. NIV says it this way, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. The word resolutely is powerful because it simply means that with admirable, purposeful determination and an unwavering manner, Jesus set out for Jerusalem. He purposed himself, determined with unwavering mannerism to go to Jerusalem. The Amplified says, Luke 9, 51, like such. Now when the time was approaching for him to be taken up to heaven, he was determined to go to Jerusalem to fulfill his purpose. Today, we begin, as we begin the second quarter of the year, we're going to be able to leap, let go, and trust, anticipate, and position. We will have to focus. We will have to focus on our purpose. Every blood washed believer has a purpose. Everyone with breath in their body is born with a what? Purpose. Get to your purpose, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Then you get the key to unlock the potentials that God has already placed in you. Amen. That you are able to do the work in assisting to build the kingdom of God. We will have to stay focused, and if we're not focused, it's time, church, to get focused. Amen. Success in life requires focus. Mm -hmm. And there's no success in life that you will have if you're not focused. There's no one who's gleaming from success that got it without being what? Focus. Focus is to bring your mind, your will, and your emotions into alignment. Say it again. Focus is to bring your mind, your will, and your emotions into alignment. Amen. This is known as the place of agreement. The place of agreement. We know from the scripture that agreement is the place of power. Agreement is the place of power. Matthew 18 19 and 20. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Focus is to bring your mind, your will, and your emotions into alignment. Amen. Agreement, Amen. again, is a place of what? Power. 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 Well, then disagreement is a place of what? Weakness. Yes. Yes. And that's why Satan spends so much time setting up disagreements. Mm -hmm. Because it weakens the believer. It sets us back. And we don't have the power that's there when we what? Agree. Right. People are so easily distracted in the world we live in, sidetracked so often that we find ourselves in fights that have nothing to do with us, taking sides and positions on things that have nothing to do with you, and having conversations that last sometimes for hours. And it has nothing to do with you. People will ring your phone and ask you questions about going on that have nothing to do with you. 
at all. He's guilty or not guilty. It has nothing to do with me. We often lose focus because we again are so what? Easily distracted. Church, right now, you need to what? Focus. So easy. Lee distracted. Jesus mentally and emotionally set himself towards his goal. His goal was the cross. Knew he had to go to the cross to die a brutal death. Be murdered. That we could have what? Eternal life. The scripture says that again truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree Amen. about anything. I looked at several versions. And all versions has anything. Mm -hmm. They ask for it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amen. Where Amen. two or three gather in my name, Amen. there I am there with them. And as Jesus speaks it, Satan hears it. Yeah. Yes, he does. Oh, I want you to know this, that Satan has good ears. <laughs> and he responds to what you say. Mm -hmm. And he's always listening. Yeah. And Satan knows us by what we what? Speak. Right. I told you in the last series that it's important that we watch our what? Mouth. Uh -huh. We got to watch the words that we speak yeah. because Satan will use the words that you speak. Yeah. Hallelujah. To plant seeds of disagreement. Make you weak because he knows in disagreement is the place of what weakness. So when we focus, we have to be able to what get our mind, will, and emotions in line. Got to get them all in check. Mind, will, and emotions have to be what in agreement. So often. My mind is telling me something. My emotions are telling me something. And I may not have the will to follow my mind or my emotions. That's right. That's right. But we need to, as Jesus did, get them all in line. As Jesus had them all in check. That's what it means when it says he what? Set his face. Amen. Amen. So now, when the time was approaching for him to be taken up to heaven, he was what? Determined to go to Jerusalem to fulfill his purpose. This morning we had a Sunday school lesson. It was wonderful, led by our own Minister Brown, and he taught us that everything that Jesus went through, he knew he would. And so he was focused. He set his face. He put his mind, rule, and emotions in, all, in agreement knowing that he would have to go through what? Adversity. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. Well, it's shocked by it. And when we focus, we need to know, even as I am focusing, life doesn't stop lifing because you decide to focus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It don't work that way. No, you don't get just to say, I'm going to focus, and then everything falls in order, and everybody act right. Kids act right. Hallelujah. Spouses act right. Hallelujah. Work act right. Hallelujah. And no, it don't work that way. I told you. Satan's always listening. When you say it, come on, just say, say I'm going to focus. He heard it. And he's going to respond to it. He's going to respond to it. So the obstacles. Are still going to be there. Yeah. Amen. People have to do what people do. So they'll make accusations. They'll say things. They'll do things. They'll get on your what? Last nerve. Yes. But we still will need to focus on God and not the obstacles. See, when you're focused, it doesn't mean that you don't have problems. It means that I'm going to focus Hallelujah, on my goal, hallelujah, not the problem. Mm -hmm. Jesus was focused on his goal. Yes. 
And as we read the book and as we know the story, there were many things that took place. But what did he do? He remained focused on the goal. Main focus on the goal. And because when we focus, I'm telling you, you got to focus. Amen. If we were going to have any type of success, when we decide to focus as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we will not make it through the distractions and over the obstacles without discipline. Discipline is everything to being focused. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. Discipline is it. All of us can have really wonderful thoughts. Ever been to a barbershop? Anybody? Beauty shop? Salon? Place where people gather and speak? You will hear a lot of thoughts. Yes, yes. Oh, people have all kind of thoughts. I'm in a barber shop and people are speaking and having deep conversations of things they know nothing about. Yes. I'm yes. silent. I'm not even right. asking questions and people giving the wrong answers and they're building on the wrong answer for the question and continue to engage with all these thoughts. Yes. People are saying what they're going to do and how they could do. And how they could be better than this person with great discipline. Amen. They have no discipline. Right. No. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplish. If you want to accomplish your goals, you will need to figure out how to get some what? Discipline. Yes. As discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment, discipline or the lack of discipline, hallelujah, is the best friend of deferred goals and dreams. Discipline is the bridge between dreaming and making the dream a reality. Oh, there's so many dreams. People have a lot of dreams. How often I hear the dreams. I quickly always try in the nicest way to direct them back to discipline. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can do it. Amen. Amen. This requires what? Discipline. Amen. So young people, look at the people who've done what you want to do. And you will find in their lives what? Discipline. Sometimes we'll tell you that you just put God first. You need to put God first. Yes, he needs to be center. He, but you also have to use him to create in you what? Discipline. Yes, yes. Me putting God first God. and being lazy and lacking discipline uh -huh. will not make my dream a reality. Oh, but with God on your side and discipline, hallelujah, your dream will be, hallelujah, reality in a matter of time if you stay what? Focus. We stand in a place looking for God to create in us what? Miracles, signs, and wonders. But it requires discipline. Again, I'm going to say it again because I want you to know this, that as we go through this month, life does not stop life because you decide to focus. Hallelujah. In actuality, life is about to turn up. Hallelujah. So you're going to have to turn your faith up and your focus up. And that's why we need to focus. Because Satan knows that you're close. Hallelujah. He knows. You're close. So his job now. To distract, to get you off track, and for you to lose focus, and for you to start getting relaxed, taking a break. You cannot take a break. These are the last and evil days, and it's time for us to turn up our focus, sharing the gospel that Jesus is. Hallelujah. 
the only way. church of Corinth, he puts it like this. Chapter 9, starting at verse 24, reading 24, 25, 26, and 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. In the NIV, Apostle Paul writes, you not know that in a race all the runners run? Yes, yes. But only one Gets the prize. It says, run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown. That will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that I, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. The Apostle Paul says that, first of all, we have a goal. Yes, amen. The goal is to do the work of Christ. Uh -huh. And at the end of our time, doing the work of Christ, that we shall what? Wear a crown. That's right. And he said that crown is not a trophy or a prize that you're going to put in a case. See, that crown will be placed on my glorified body forever. Yeah, yeah. And I will be able to be with him and see his face. Amen. So, so therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. What does that mean? I don't run like someone without focus. I run like someone that is focused on my goal. So I run like someone who is focused on my goal. So I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. I thought about it. When a boxer is fighting and moving and beating the air, he's building up a false sense of victory. Because when you're beating it, everybody's done it. I know I've done it as a kid. I know the young people did it. When you're doing it, you're quick. You're fast. Oh, you start when you oh when you you airboxing by yourself, or you start to feel like you're really doing something. You do. Oh, you know, I'm I'm older, so I'm from the Muhammad Ali age, the Sugar Ray Leonard age. So you start shuffling your feet and you really think. That you're doing something. Yes. When you're doing it, you begin to believe that you can defeat an enemy in a real fight. You do. Now, I met people. Amen. Amen. Really believe. Big or bad. It's like the barbershop talk. I wish Mike Tyson would walk in here. I wish he would. Because what you've done is you build yourself up on what? Nothing. Air is what? Nothing. So you're beating nothing. There's not even resistance when you beat the air. So it's not even building muscle. You just swing it. And moving, you might be burning some calories, but you're not preparing yourself for the real fight. Paul is saying, therefore I do not run like some running aimless. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. I'm not out here 
acting like I'm preparing myself to do a work and I'm really not doing nothing. That's what he's saying. So I'm not out here posing, faking, and acting like I'm about to be something. And I don't have any discipline to back it up. And that's what it is. People ask me, I'm about to do this. I'm about to, man, I got this plan. I'm about to, it's about to be big. Hallelujah. I'm, I got it right now. I got this, this, that. You know those cats. I got this. I'm setting it up right now. I'm doing this right now. I'm waiting for a call back right now. When this call comes, hallelujah, it's all going to fall in line. All right? All right. So what are you doing in the meantime? Then I'm just waiting on the call. I'm airboxing. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. What you doing? Now, Paul said it requires discipline. What kind of discipline? He said, I strike a blow to my body and make my make it a slave. Hallelujah. So what? I get my body and I make it discipline. Hallelujah. How do I do that? My body don't tell me when it's hungry. I feed my body when I say you eat. Hallelujah. So I will fast. I'll turn over the plate. I'll seek his face. You're not controlling me. Your urine is my thoughts. Hallelujah. I'm not responding to what you want. I'm responding what God wants what? Of me. So I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be what? Disqualified. What is he saying? If you don't have no dis discipline, even though you might speak good, it might sound good, and people might even come to Christ because of what you shared, but you're going to put yourself, hallelujah, in jeopardy of losing the crown. Because you do not have discipline. Again, Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. Discipline is the bridge between dreaming and making the dream a reality. Come on, young people, you got to get this. A disciplined, a disciplined disciple will accomplish his or her purpose, dreams, and goals. Oh, I'm going to say it again because I don't think y'all got excited about that because that's good news. A disciplined uh -huh. yeah. disciple uh -huh. will accomplish uh -huh. his or her purpose, uh -huh. dreams, uh -huh. and goals. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. With God on your side yeah. and discipline uh -huh. and focus, yeah. hallelujah. Satan ain't got a chance. So that's why he's going to focus on getting you distracted. Never starting. Or always stopping what you start. Having no discipline. Then he's going to grab your mind. And put a whole bunch of craziness in it. And it's going to paralyze your will. Yeah. And then your emotions are going to be all over the place. Hallelujah. Amen. You stroll in on social media crying. Because your emotions are all over the place. Yeah. Because you have not aligned them to agree. Yeah. And Jesus gives an example of how to get it done. Says you have to what? Mentally and emotionally right. set yourself towards your goal. That's what he said. Amen. So he knew that Jerusalem, for anybody else, if you knew what was going to happen there and you really followed the scripture, Jerusalem is the last place he wanted to go. Jerusalem should have been troubled. Jerusalem should have been the place. Holler, he should have been in California. Hallelujah. I'm not going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is tough. But Jerusalem stood between what? His goal. So he hit it head on. He said, I'm going to move head on to the place, hallelujah, where I'm going to deliver the victory. And in order to do it, got to be what? Focus. I gotta dial in. I gotta look at my time. I gotta check myself. I gotta get myself square.
word in. Yeah. I got to get rid of all the excuses. Yeah. Amen. God. I got to go get me a healthy trash bag. A healthy <laughs> trash bag. Yeah. Big healthy. Yeah. Big one. The one that stretch. Yeah. You know what I call them? A big one. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And then you're going to go and get all of your excuses. And you're going to put them in that trash bag. And I don't know when your trash come. Mine come Monday morning. And that's a good day because today's Sunday. But you're going to put that in there. And you're going to put it in a trash can. And you're going to roll it to the curb. Amen? Oh, that's lit. You're going to kick, hallelujah, your excuses to the curb. You're going to put them in the trash, put them in the curb, and you're going to forget about them. And you're not going to use any of those excuses anymore because they trash and they go on to the dumpster. Hallelujah. And now all I got, some tools the pastor's about to give me to create some discipline in me to focus, hallelujah, to get to what God has me to do so I can find myself living my best, blessed life and not looking at other people with discipline who are living their best, blessed life mad. Oh, you get that on fast day. Hallelujah. Man, she wakes up at 5, goes to bed at 11 to get it done. Amen. You wake up at 11, go to bed at 12, <laughs> and pretty much all day, okay. you just having a ball. Right. <laughs> a whole ball. <laughs> hey, man, y'all know how to have a ball. Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> I don't know why they keep getting molested. I don't know why it's happening for them. Right. Hallelujah. Gonna dial in. Real quick, I'm out of here. Three tools to help us start today to create some discipline that we're able to use, hallelujah, to give us the strength to remain focused. First one. I heard it so many times before. There's two words that I want you to hold on to first. Consistent and rough. First one, develop a consistent prayer life. Say it again. Develop a consistent prayer life. That is much different than saying, I pray. Amen? Develop a consistent prayer life life. That now, part of my life is prayer. That's what it means to have a prayer life. Amen. That part of my life is prayer. And it's consistent. And what it should look like is that because I'm developing discipline, it should have some sacrifice attached to it. I'm going to make it plain. When you're developing a consistent prayer life, there should be some what? Sacrifice attached to it. What happens? So when we say, yeah, I have a prayer life. I pray when I wake up. I pray when I eat. And I pray before I go to bed. And that's, that's consistent. And I have a prayer life. Amen. It doesn't require any sacrifice. It doesn't require any special attention. I can't invite nobody to that. It is just me doing what I've done. Uh -huh. Now I lay me down to sleep. Hallelujah. Right, right. What we need to do is create what? A consistent prayer life, developing a time that now I'm sacrificing to get up and to seek God's face consistently. So, if my alarm clock has been going off at 545, I'm going to set my alarm clock to 530, and I'm going to give 15 minutes, hallelujah, to wake up earlier, to seek God's face, praying to him, asking him, hallelujah, to renew in me, hallelujah, cancel everything that's going on in my life that's not like you. And asking God, Create in me discipline yeah. and to keep me what? Focus. 
Find a time where I can create it and set it to be what? Sacrificial. So even if I go to bed religiously at 10 o'clock, I'm going to stay up another 15 minutes and I'm going to set my face, hallelujah, set it up and begin to pray, hallelujah, and journal and talk to God. And while I'm doing it, it has to be the idea that if I wasn't doing this, I would probably be asleep. But I'm sacrificing my sleep to seek God's face because I'm developing what? A consistent prayer life. So often, we'll say, okay, I'll pray. And then we move on. No. You have to have a prayer life. And you do it to now it's part of my life. This is what I do. This is who I am. Hallelujah. I have a prayer life. It's beauty when you have a prayer life. It's beautiful. And I know I'm spending time with this because for years I sat in church and I lived saved and I raised my hand and I said I had a prayer life. And I did not. I didn't. I was praying and I was living. Hallelujah. But I didn't have a consistent prayer life. Then when I begin to develop a consistent prayer life, Uh because I had some goals and some things I wanted God to do for me in ministry, then I started to see discipline in my life. And I started to see what? Immediate results. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm praying and I'm sacrificing and I'm putting them first. And he's using this time to wash away, hallelujah, the deposits that were placed in me the day before. Amen. Set my feet and set my face and keep me focused. Yeah, hallelujah. Number two, number two, come on, man. Is studying the word of God. Yes. Study the word of God. Studying the Bible. Amen. Studying the Bible. Amen. When I study the Bible, the same principle needs to be in play. Amen. That I've set a time yes. and I'm consistent and it's going to require some sacrifice because I may not be able to do something that I like to do during this time of studying the Bible. So I'm going to have to give that up and grab this. Amen. And that creates what? Discipline. Discipline. Amen? Amen? I was talking to someone about the power of just fasting and, and they told me that this is what I'm telling you. This is, I'll make it plain. They said that I go to bed every night at 8 and I wake up around 8. So I'm going to fast from 8 to 8. I said, I'm, gonna do. I'm, gonna, I'm fasting from 8 to 8. I'm not eating nothing. That's 12 hours. And I'll wake up, and I'm now, no, that's not creating discipline. You're not putting your body that's sleep in check. Because the body ain't thinking about food when you're sleeping. I don't think it is. I'm not, no. Amen? Amen? So you have to create discipline. By what? Sacrifice. That's what it is. That's how you create it. If I'm just putting some time before I say, yeah, um, I fast from when I'm sleeping. Hallelujah. I read the Bible when I'm in church. I pray while the pastor's praying. Hallelujah. No, those are sacrifices. It's not the discipline that you're looking for. You want what? Discipline. And to get discipline, you have to sacrifice. So what am I doing? I'm developing a consistent prayer life. I'm developing a consistent Bible study, a word study life, and I'm sacrificing to do it. And in doing it now is creating discipline. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm looking at it like, man, I used to be able to do this. Now I'm doing it. And you can start really little. Amen. I'm telling you, you can move a little bit. I'm doing three scriptures. I'm going to set a time. I'm going to read three scriptures. Reflect on those three scriptures, read them in couples and versions, and see what they speak to me. Amen. And journal. Just three scriptures. Amen. 
Then you're going to increase that to six. Amen? Amen. Then one day you'll be, I read, I'm reading a chapter a day. Amen. And I'm enjoying it. I'm journaling. I'm making notes. I'm learning. That's what did you create discipline. But I got to start somewhere. You can start with three scriptures. And in no time you'll be what? Study in the word of God. You will have this new discipline and you'll be growing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Same with your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Alright, the third one, we're going to get out of here, but it's a lot, so I just want you to get it because this is the hardest one. It's really hard. I'm telling you up front. Amen? So if I'm not hearing any amens, I'm not even mad. Amen? I'm not going to be mad. I'll just be good. Just you know, be like, It's okay because I believe you need this because we need the discipline to be focused to get to where God wants us to go. Amen? Amen. And God has given all of you some visions. I know he has. He's given you some dreams. He's told you some things that he wants to do for you, and now you're trying to figure out how to get there. Amen? And this is what you need to get to where God wants you to go. Amen? So it might be a little tough. Amen? Don't worry about it because I want everything that God has for me. Hallelujah? I want it. I want everything. I want to wear a crown. Hallelujah. Yeah. Number three, guard your inputs. Guard your inputs. What does that mean? Inputs. Where do you spend your most time? Guard it. Reflect on it. Where am I at most of the time? Guard your inputs. Ask the question, who do I hang out with? Who do I hang out with? Are they believers? Are they encouragers? Do they inspire? Are they takers? Are they stealers? Thieves? Are they snatching my energy? Who do you Hang out with. Where do you spend your most time? Who do you hang out with? Guard your inputs. What do you read? What do you read? What am I reading? I'm reading the Bible? I'm reading posts? What am I reading? What do you read? I got to guard what I'm reading. I got to guard who I'm spending my time with and where I'm spending my time. I got to guard these things because these things are going to still swipe my discipline. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You hang around a bunch of people that don't care about being healthy, uh, and you go over there and start talking health talk, right. they're going to talk you out of it. Right. You know this man, I'm trying to go, you ain't going to eat Cinnabon? Man, you tripping. You tripping. I'm about, to, I'm about to go to the gym. And, what? Why are you going to the gym? I'm not going to the gym. I'm cool. You know, and they'll tell you, like, yeah, you know what? You're going to die anyway. That's what they're going to say. They'll say, you're going to die anyway. And then you're going to say, yeah, I'm going to die. But I don't want nobody struggling with the casket. Hallelujah. I want to live a life. Hallelujah. Where I can get up out of there with four pallbearers. Hallelujah. Little ones. Hallelujah. Everybody's struggling. Well, I've been a pallbearer. And it it's been a struggle. In the deep south. Walking through the red dirt clay. You're like, Lord, God. How did they sign me up for this? I'm just trying to say keep your focus. That was to keep your focus. Amen. You want to make sure that I'm not hanging around people who are like-minded. Yes. Who ain't got no goals, got no dreams, ain't trying to build the kingdom of God, ain't trying to share the good news, aren't trying to share the gospel. If I'm spending all my time with them and I'm hanging out with them, hallelujah, and I'm reading all kind of stuff that is against God and not for God, right. hallelujah. That's right. It's going to be pulling me away. Amen. So how much news do you watch every day? All of us here knows that negativity sells. So in the boardroom or whatever news channel you watch, the goal is to get the most negative, impactful images and messages to the people to grab their attention. That's why they look in the room. Hey, we got to get this. It's really bad. All right, get it to the people. 
That's what news is. Now, oh, something really good happened over there at that school. Something really good is going on. Make sure we start off the news with that really good story. That ain't what happened. Else. Start off with that. Then I run in there and it was a miracle. She was announced dead and she got us. Make sure we start the story on top. Today. No. That ain't news. Hallelujah. No, news is generally what? Negative. And so we need to how, how, watch how much news we watch. That input, how much is that getting in me? If I'm looking for a job and I wake up and they keep telling me every morning there ain't no jobs. Amen? Because before you know it, I'm going to stop looking for a job. You wake up. The economy is really, really bad. No one's hiring. There's no jobs. As you get ready to go look. Go to the news, run over there and go to now you at Chick-fil-A. Let's eat. Hallelujah. You got to be very aware of what you're allowed to get in you, your inputs. Amen. Give me two more. This one's a big one. You gotta pay attention to your inputs. Watch the television shows, movies. Social media scrolling. Uh -huh. Watch what you're watching. What are you gravitating towards? What grabs your attention? And how much of it are you watching? Right. Got to do it. What am I watching? Yeah. What am I? What am I allowing to just get me away from discipline, away from my focus? Yes. Yes. Is this building me up? Right. Am I learning? Mm -hmm. Am I engaging? Is it inspiring me? Or is just dumbing me down, making me paralyzed, making me just sit there and relax and wonder and think about other stuff. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, shared, I shared, I shared with a, 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 a friend a couple of weeks ago, told him one thing that I had to stop doing. Amen. I, I, I started watching, I used to watch a lot of kind of like real estate shows. Amen. Stuff, fancy houses, but like fancy, big, expensive yeah. house shows. I, I like that. I like fancy stuff. So I was watching that stuff. Amen. You know, it was like million dollar listings. Amen. Those kind of shows like fancy stuff, all this fancy stuff. And so I'm watching it all the time. Amen. And so me watching it all the time. Guess what happens next? I start to start walking around like I need a better house. I'm not even thankful what I got. I'm looking. I'm like, man, I want a million dollar house. Amen. God, you ain't going to bless me with a million dollar. It gets in you. You start looking, at God, you know that God bless you and the house you live in is a whole miracle. And now you're looking and asking God to give you something else and you want more. And gotta watch. You gotta watch it. Cause it get in you. I'm looking here, I'm scrolling, looking at houses. Amen. Three dollars. The house costs 3.6 million. I got three dollars. Hallelujah. It's going to take a miracle. Hallelujah. Wasting my time. It's a waste of time. That's good for them. We got nothing to do with me. Nothing. Nothing to do with me. Nothing at all. God bless them. Amen. I need to be focused on what I got to do and what I need to do when dial in. Amen. And when God bless me so and I'm in the market for something like that, then at that time, I'll worry about it. Hallelujah. But if I'm looking at stuff that ain't, I mean, it's distraction. It's wasting my time. No, don't do it. And I'm not saying gauging yourself for something you can't have around the corner. I'm not talking, I'm talking about when you set your face on stuff that's so far from you. Amen. And you allow it to start to affect the way you feel even about yourself. Amen? We do it. Beat you up. Gotta watch the inputs. Be mad. But you don't know why. You don't have $5,000 shoes. Stop it. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm looking at them all in the store, shopping online. I'm looking at it. I got it all in my box. <laughs> Amen? Amen. You know you shop, you got it in your cart. Amen? 
$23,000 worth of merchandise in your cart. And now they email you. Still got some in your cart. It's going to be in my cart because, again, I got how much? $3. Hallelujah. And guess what? When I get more, I'm not getting that. Stop it. It's just what? A way to allow your mind to lose focus and traction on where it's supposed to be and what God has for you. Don't you know what God has for you is for you? If you get focused, don't you know that everything God's going to give you, you're going to get? I don't care where you are now and what it looked like, everything that God, it has your name on it. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not just up for grab. That's not what we're doing. God has assigned things for you. Your name is on it. It is uniquely yours. That's why you don't get mad with somebody else. It ain't mine. Hallelujah. People say, you got my car. How can I get your car? Hallelujah. My name is on mine. It might look like yours, similar, but not the same. Hallelujah. Everything that's mine is mine. Hallelujah. Because he put my name on it. Because he knows my name. And I got to stay focused, chasing after him. Hallelujah. Doing the work that he set before me to do. Can't be distracted by what they got going on. Well, I'm going to focus on what God has for me to do. I'm going to get disciplined. I'm going to develop a consistent prayer life. I'm going to study the Bible. I'm going to guard these inputs. I'm going to guard them. You're paying attention to it. The last one is the most important one, and all of us struggle with it. And it's how much do you allow people to dump their stuff on you? I'm going to say it again. How much do you allow people to dump their stuff on you? get distracted. There's so many people losing because of other people's stuff. Amen. I've had people, I'm a pastor, you know, everybody knows this. People approach me and say, I have a lot of problems. Well, let's talk. And in talking with them, they only had one problem. They told me eight things. Because those eight other things don't belong to other people. And they carry them like badges. Oh, I'm so I'm overwhelmed. I, that ain't your problem. Sorry, sis. That's your problem. That's your sister's problem. Right. That ain't yours. That's your brother's problem. Hallelujah. That's your adult child's problem. Yes. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. And the only way you can bless them is get to doing what God has you to do. To be focused. And then when you're focused, guess what? You might be able to then impact their situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been on a plane? What do they say? When the problem starts, holla, you better put the mask over yourself what? First? I know it's hard. I flew the first time with my little kid. And I'm like, I'm like, no. And not him. <laughs> Poor little Mason. <laughs> say, put it over your face first, then proceed to what? Help. Okay. Amen. We have stopped putting it over our face first. Amen. Amen. You got to get good. Amen. Amen? Amen. You limping, trying to carry somebody. Get good. Yeah. Pull yourself together to help them. Yeah. That should make me want to be focused, right? Because I want to do the work that's set before me. I want to be a blessing to everybody I come in contact with. I cannot do it if I don't get focused on what God would have me to do so I can be able to bless them. Amen? Amen. Well, that's my desire. Amen. I don't want to have words. Paul, like, oh, I got you. I got it. Uh, Pastor, I need a car. What, what you do? I got you. Come see me tomorrow at 7 a.m. You have a car. That's what we want to get, right? But if I'm worried about everybody else and not focused and not going after what God will have me, I can, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have it. Amen? I, I am not going to have it. If every time I get $2, I give somebody a dollar fifty, I'll never have three. Hallelujah. Think about what I just said. If every time I get $2, 
I give somebody a dollar fifty, I'll never have three. Right, somebody was thinking because you're trying to do fancy math, like, yeah, because you're going to add them. I can't add it up. But I just said, every time I get to two dollars, hallelujah, I give somebody a dollar fifty, I will only always have fifty. Amen? I got a thirst to cure my bad. Hallelujah. Oh, you need to hear it today. I got to plant my feet. I got to set my face steadfastly. I got to get myself together. Hallelujah. If I get myself together and I'm able to do what God has called me to do, then I can get out here. Hallelujah. When I first accepted the call to pastor, first thing I prayed, God make me debt free. I need to get my life together because I can't be a blessing to other people. So I, God, you got to do it for me. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Got to pray for you. Can't do nothing for you until I, hallelujah. That's right. Started praying that. And God start doing that. Hallelujah. But you got to be able to focus on what God, hallelujah, has for you. I don't do that. Missed it. I missed it. There's a lot going on when Jesus, Luke 9 51, closing. They just rejected him. The Jews rejected him. You can read it when you get home. There's a lot going on. He was feeling overwhelmed. Hallelujah. Accusations. All kind of it was really a tough time. And in that season. Scripture says, Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. What does that say? He said, I don't care what's going on. It's my time. Hallelujah. Oh, so you need to get that in your spirit. I don't care what's going on. It is my time. Hallelujah, I'm going to set my face. I'm going to focus. I'm going to get everything God has for me. I'm going to be found doing everything that God wants me to do. If he wants me to preach, I'm preaching. If he wants me to teach, I'm teaching. If he wants me to sing, I'm singing. If he wants me to share, I'm sharing. Everything that God has for me to do, I'm going to find myself doing in this season. I'm going to be focused. I'm going to be steadfast. Why? Hallelujah. Because he's purposed me to do it. When I do it, I win. I get the victory. Just like Jesus got. Set his face. Things turned up. Obstacles came. Accusations came. And he stayed focused. Hallelujah. To get his disciples to what? Stay focused. Garden of Gethsemane. Soldiers come. Peter grabs his blade and cuts the ear off the soldier. Jesus said, put that back on his ear. Put the ear back. And I don't know if we just don't stay there. Because to me, if I'm a guard and I've seen the son of man or the man who's saying he's the son of man take an ear, place it on a man's head, and he's healed. I would have dropped my sword and I would have marched on. I would say, hey, y'all can have this one. Hallelujah! But in that, I told him, stay focused. We didn't come here to fight here. So if I wanted to, I could have called the angels who tore this place up. My goal in Jerusalem is to go to the cross. Hallelujah! You're going to have to tell somebody my goal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop that. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. I know what's going on, yeah. but I got a goal. Yeah. Hold on. I'm focused on my goal. Anybody want to make heaven their home? Uh, Hallelujah. Yes, oh, I want to make it my home. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that on the way to it, that Jesus came, not only that I would have everlasting life, that I would have everlasting joy. Everlasting joy is me living my best blessed life. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Regardless of what's going on, I have joy because I'm focused. I'm doing what God has called me to do. Amen. He's on. That's a horrible thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm focused. Hallelujah. God is in the midst. And he's going to bring me through. Amen. 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 He's going to bring you through. Yeah. All we need to do is what? Get focused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get focused. If we stay focused, hallelujah, I told you that there's nothing that a disciple can't do when they're focused. It's nothing. Hallelujah. You got to be focused. Make the main thing what? The main thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a praise. We get ready to pray out. God, we thank you for the opportunity, for the gathering, oh God, that we've come to this place, oh God, to hear from you, oh God, that you will reset our feet, that we might set our face, hallelujah, towards you, oh God, that we will be dialed in and focused, oh God, aiming to do what you've called us to do, everything that you've placed in us, every purpose, every gift that you've given, oh God, we pray you stir it up now, oh God, we want to use it for building the kingdom of God on earth that it is in heaven. Even as we're praying for increase, Lord God, we want you to increase our focus. Oh God, that we can keep you, hallelujah, at the center of it all. God, we pray it on today. Oh God, we pray now that you would find distractions. Oh God, that you would take them away. Oh God, that you would silence phones. Hallelujah, that you would stop, hallelujah, the enemy. Hallelujah, plan, hallelujah, to take me off my goal. God, I pray it on today. Oh God, and now I pray that you will bring new habits. Oh God, that you make me a student of your word. Yes, oh God, that you bring forth a prayer life. And that you would allow me to have the knowledge yes, and the wisdom to guard all the yes, inputs. Yes, all those things that imparted in me and put it in me. Oh God, that bring me farther away from you. Oh God, that I can block them. Oh God, I pray this in your son Jesus' name. 